ABC DVD, Two Brothers Alphabetical Journey Through Our Giant DVD Collection. That is a Category 5. I'm Josh. I'm Noah. And today we're talking about Pacific Rim. The uh, Guillermo del Toro robots fighting kaijus. Yep. Okay. Um, and I'm going to start you know, with a little, our little banter beforehand. Yep. Um, is this is one of my favorite kind of go-to, what I'm going to deem as a meat and potato kind of movie. Yeah. And by meat and potatoes, like, it is not doing anything fancy, but it's doing it well. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't give people crap for liking things like Cowboys versus Aliens, yeah. Aliens versus Predators. Like, you know what you're getting going into it. However, I'm on the rewatch and doing it for this, I, I did notice things like, this is a meat and potatoes, but it does it differently, and I think that's what makes it shine okay. more than an average... Rock'em Sock'em oh, Robot yeah, your, Monsters. Your, your tentpole uh, blockbuster exactly. that you'll see one year and not see And another. I think it's, it's it's more than just Guillermo del Toro's uh, incredible monster adaptations. Mm -hmm. I think there's a lot of things that I, you know, once we get to the introductions, like, I just want to point out, like, it's done enough different that I think it engages the mind to kind of go along with a, a, a different story. Yeah, I mean, they, they do some amazing world, world building right off the bat. Um, this came out in 2013, mm -hmm. uh, directed, as we uh, stated, by Guillermo del Toro. Uh, he's known for Pan's Labyrinth, Hellboy, Shape of Water. Mm -hmm. uh, we, I learned he has a degree in monsters. From... It's not so much a degree. He has a deep love of okay. monsters. As when he was um, coming up in Hollywood, he, a lot of his introduction was in makeup. Okay. Um, and he already had a deep fascination of sea creatures. He wanted to be a marine biologist, but also write horror stories. And so a lot of his unique designs come from this love of nature and also this love of movie makeup. Uh -huh. And I think if there's anything that you can point to with Guillermo del Toro, it is that he has a very distinct monster style. It's very... Uh, Geiger-esque. It's like, yeah. it is, the, you have not seen a monster done by Guillermo del Toro by anybody else. Yeah. They're, they are, you know, that unnerving, creepy, but very beautifully done. Well, and it's, he's like, he, his whole thing is he never wanted monsters just to be monsters. He's like, I want you to see the monster mm -hmm. in very different angles. Yeah. Uh, this was written by Guillermo del Toro and Travis, uh, I, we're going to mispronounce Brackman, Breachman. Uh, Travis was known for uh, Clash of the Titans, Pacific Rim 2, and the Curiosity. No, yeah, that's it. Uh, a fun story about how this was written, because okay. it was pitched by Travis to Guillermo, yeah. is that he said he was walking along the coast of California, mm -hmm. and he saw like a lighthouse pier coming out of the mist, and it reminded him of a giant robot. Mm -hmm. And he's like, oh... That'd be so cool if a robot was coming out of the uh, the waters and coming on to shore to fight. Yeah, I and it's mean, like, well, you know, there 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 are worse reasons to start a movie. Exactly, and you, you talk to the right person. Um, this is starring Idris Elba as uh, Stagger Pentecast. Um, he's known for many things, but Thor Ragnarok, Beast of No Nation, uh, The Losers. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's Idris Elba. It's, it's Idris Elba. Elba. You should know him. Um, Charlie Hummin is uh, R Riley or Riley. Riley Beckett. Uh, he's in Children of Men, The Gentleman, King Arthur, uh, Legend of the Sword. Okay. Um, and then uh, I'm going to mispronounce this, and I apologize. Uh, also starring Rinko Kukichi, uh, who plays Meiko Mori. Uh, she's in Babel, The Brothers Bloom, and Kumiko, The Treasure Hunter. Okay. Yeah. Um, I guess I can just do my synopsis real quick. Uh, long ago, legions of monstrous creatures called kaiju arose from the sea, bringing with them all consuming war. To fight the kaiju, mankind developed giant robots called Jaegers, designed to be piloted by two humans locked together in a neural bridge. How e however, even the Jaegers are not enough to defeat the kaiju, and humanity is on the verge of defeat. Mankind's last hope now lies with a washed-up ex-pilot, Chari Hunnam, and an untested trainee, Ringo Kuichi, and an old, ob obsolete Jaeger. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I guess. No, no, it, it, no. it, it is, it, like I said, meat and potatoes. Yeah. You could tell someone, like, listen, yeah. there's giant robots beating up yeah. monsters, and you would not be wrong. Yeah, I, I told, like, a friend, it's like, do you know the plot of Independence Day? It's that, but with robots and monsters. Mm -hmm. yeah. But it's like, the, the, I'm going to talk to my, my deeper hitting yeah, meaning, because... Yeah. There's not a lot of deeper. It yeah. is, on its surface, a very actiony movie. Yeah. But it does things differently enough that yeah. I think 
subconsciously you get more engaged. The fact that you're not calling them robots, yeah. you're calling them Jaegers, Jaegers from the German word hunter. hunter yeah. They're not sea monsters or aliens. They're, they're kaiju, which is the remnant of like the Godzilla monsters yeah. of old. And, and and this movie doesn't uh, take its time to show you one. No, I mean it, it is the opening shot basically. The, and I said I wrote down like I really liked how they did the let's bring you up to speed mm -hmm. in using the mixed media mm -hmm. of we're going to show you like movie clips, but then we're going to have newscasts and we're going to have podcasts and we're going to have you know TV shows and this all these things like you know commercials is it makes the world feel lived in. And, yeah. I, and, and I was reminiscent of, um, you know, Game of Thrones, of when he wrote that first book. As yeah. He's not bringing you up to speed. He's like, no, this world is lived in. Yeah. I'm going to treat you like the people, like, you should know some of these things. And yeah. I think this is done in a similar way of, like, things are given names. They're not just like, well, this is HQ. They're like, no, this is the Shatterdome. Yeah. And names are given, and it's done yeah. so well to make you feel like, Man, I want to know more about this world. Yeah, it's that it's that humans are going to still act like humans. Of mm -hmm. if we think we're going to continue winning, we're going to make this a spectacle and a fun thing, mm -hmm. and it's going to stay that way until we stop winning. Exactly, and that's where we are in the movie. That the kaiju have gotten so big and so powerful that the Jaegers are not working. Mm -hmm. and that's where the opening narration. Uh, cuts off and we get uh, introduced to our you know, protagonist of Raleigh mm -hmm. uh, and his brother going off to fight this most recent kaiju. Right, and you know we we talk about like the drift compatibility. Yeah. There is a there, you know it's it does things like the movie should do yeah. is establish rules. Yes, and this one's like no, no you got to have two people and they got to be compatible. They got to know yeah. each other inside and out. I, I think of us at any holiday yeah. dinner where we're finishing each other's jokes and people are like, what is wrong, wrong with, with you two? two? Yeah, they say siblings because they live similar lives are more drift compatible. Mm -hmm. And so so they, they tend to either take twins or take at least siblings to, 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 the, to run these Jaegers. Yep. And then you get, you know, these long shots of the robot, you know, the Jaeger mm -hmm. getting set up. And it's like, it reminds me of... Japanese animes of, yeah. you know, when the hero is morphing into yeah, their thing. Yeah. It's like, it's done as like, you see like the sounds and the, the, yeah. it's like, it is this like, no, no, it's not like, oh, they just jump into action. Like, no, no, it's, it's like a, it's a process. It's a process. Yeah. There's a launch protocol. And, and I, you know, I love that, uh, the older brother says, hey kid, don't get cocky. And I was like, <laughs> is this a Star Wars reference? It's like, gotta a, be a Star, Star Wars. Wars reference. And then they get into the Jaeger. And as a video game lover myself, the AI is GLaDOS from mm -hmm. Portal. Now, if you had seen the trailer for this movie, you would have been 100% said, that's GLaDOS. Because in the trailer, uh, uh, Guillermo del Toro loved the game and loved the voice actor. So they got her and they used it 100% in the trailer. But they said, we have to tone it down for the movie. It right. can't be distracting. No, but it, it, it is his love of things geeky and AI. Yeah. Um, you're getting these great music interludes with great sound, you know, mm. like the chunks and mm. the the whirring. You like it sounds like a metal machine. It feels and sounds real. Um, it's one of those few times that I can say like, no, no. If you had the chance to see this in a movie theater, it was one of those like, no, you should see it in the movie theater. The surround sound and the spectacle, the size, the yeah. size makes it. If if you have a really good setup at home, crank your sound up. That's yeah. where this movie lives and dies yeah. by. And then you get uh, Marshall Pentecost, yes. which it's one of those things. It's not general. It's not admiral. It's Marshall. They, they use the term Marshall, and I think it's just those little changes mm -hmm. that makes you like, oh, yeah. Marshall's a cool sounding yeah, yeah. title. I want to be a Marshall. Yeah, yeah. And he's like, you know, it's, it's a, that defense of the land. It's the Marshall. Mm -hmm. you know? Instead of like, oh, we're going to war. It's like, we're defending our territory. Yep. And he's, you know, he is a clear cut military man. Mm -hmm. Like, my orders are, mm -hmm. you know, God given. Yeah. It's like most of his dialogue is ins inspirational speeches or intimidating, you know, put downs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I also just have to point out, I was like, I like the 3D glass screens. Yes. I don't know. It's like, it's, that difference thing is like, well, that's a fun, yeah, f you know, f future. near future tech. Was yeah. like, we're like, oh, we could do that. That's yeah. different. Yeah, I mean, the near future of twenty twenty. Right. Well, you yeah, know, at know. the time, at the time, yes. Uh, but yeah, you get it, like these. These are you know, hot shot maverick yeah. pilots. So, like they got orders. They're not going to do it. They're yeah. going to go save do that boat. Yeah, they're going to save the deadliest catch boat. <laughs> it's like the deadliest catch just got deadlier because now you've got kaiju. Yeah, it's like it's, we're not hunting you know crabs and lobsters. We're we're hunting kaiju. But yeah, you get the the first kaiju uh, by the name of Knifehead, who yeah. is like an alligator shark. Yeah, and. 
you know, you definitely get a sense of the size and scope of this movie by like this boat is like crap we are between two titans yeah and i love that uh gypsy danger their jaeger pops out from under the water it's like did you go underwater just to have that cool reveal of course they did because they're hot shots they're hot shots yeah. uh but you know they their hubris got the best of them and you know they they, got, they win the day but they win the day but at a huge cost of you know raleigh loses his brother while attached to him while attached to him um and Yep. You get a of, of another kind of fun scene of a Rick Moranis yeah. type character, you know, doing a, a metal detecting on the beach with his son and kind of pointing it out <laughs> to see. And you get yeah. the, um, the mist out of the mist, this robot yeah. coming to shore. Yeah. And I love it's like metal detecting on the beach could be a fun hobby. Metal detecting on the beach in Alaska in the winter in the snow sounds awful. Well, it's like, that kid has the has you know, like the look of someone's like. Dad does this every weekend. Yeah. We never find anything cool, but there's can, nothing else to do because uh, we're yeah, in Alaska. Yeah. And then 17 minutes in, we get to know what movie we're in. This is Pacific Rim. We get roll credits. Mm -hmm. Yep. But we get the, the you know the five years later, the Jaegers are on the ropes. Yeah. We are going to build the wall. And as we know, in today's walls solve all problems. I, I was like. Walls don't work. They don't. Walls didn't work with the Mongols. It didn't work with the Kool-Aid man. <laughs> it doesn't work when you try to set it up on the beach to save your sandcastle. Walls, Walls don't, don't work. work. And as you see, you know, this is a, a, a boondoggle of like, oh, the wall will be completed and spray painted over with never in red <laughs> no. spray paint. It's like, yeah, this is just... This is just to put a band-aid and make the masses feel good. Well, and you see it real quickly of these people are working. Mm. Uh, there's ob Things yeah. have gone bad because, like, yeah. you're working for rations. Yeah. Uh, people are dying. Yeah. But it's, you know... It's reminiscent of, like, the Great Depression and mm -hmm. before uh, health and safety for the Industrial Revolution of, hey, three people just died here. We got three new jobs. Who wants them? It's like, oh. Yeah, it's, it is kind of creepy. But then yeah. they get to see on the TV, the yeah. wall doesn't work. Yeah, you know, it, it, it lasted one hour. Yeah, it is, you know they 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 got to and the Jaegers, you know, in Australia. Yeah. did their jobs, and you get the kind of uh, Godfather esque scene of they're gonna pull him back in yeah. because you're the you're yeah. you're our only Mach three <laughs> fighter, you know, yeah, pilot. God, Godfather, I got a Rambo feel of it. Yeah. It's like I I need you to come back, John. You know? <laughs> you're my best. You're my best. Um, and he gets you know they go to Hong Kong and well, and once again done slightly different. It's like, you're not going to L.A. Yeah. You're not going to a big... It's like, you're going to Hong, Hong Kong, Kong, which is not a normal setting for a movie. And I feel like this is pre-China uh, baiting where they want to get that money, but it's like, no, it's the Pacific rim of uh, the, the, the Wheel of Fire, you know, yeah. the Ring of Fire, and if America's going to turn its back on the Jaegers and you need this black market, you're not going to do it in this hemisphere, you're going to do it in the other one, and you know what? Hong Kong's going to give you the, <laughs> that that money. And I can only assume in this world that Japan doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> well, it's pro yeah, probably didn't do well. I mean, we know... Uh, Mako's Japanese, but yes. but and we know that they, you know that they probably got hit uh, hard too. But yeah. Yeah, they're a tinier and more vulnerable areas. So. But yeah, we get a base you know called the Shatter Dome, mm. and you get this uh, a very fun introduction to the rest of the characters. You yeah. got the two scientists, Newt and Herman, who are comic relief. They're very you know mm -hmm. smothers. Brother, yeah, yeah, kind of like like they're playing off each other. You got you know kind of you know more loose and fast. You got a uh, uptight and yeah, yeah. You got your 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 rock star scientist and your 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 your, uptight, your Oxford Oxford England. side. You know Charlie Day playing Newton and Burn uh, Gorman playing uh, Gottlieb or Gottlieb. But you know, mm -hmm. and and we also get the fun thing that uh, to show that Riley is not just a himbo. Mm -hmm. uh, that Mako speaks in Japanese in front of him saying that he's not what, you know, she not what he expected. expects and he responds. Yeah, no, he and, is not, you know, just a you know, the, beefcake, you know. Yeah, you know, the dialogue doesn't help him out in this movie, but he is supposed to be smarter than he no, is. No, and since you brought it up, yeah. I will fully admit that the dialogue yeah. is not stellar, but that is not the purpose of the movie, no. is the dialogue is to progress the story, not, is like, there is no deep yeah. character I did progression not, is yeah. it is literally we want to show a story yeah the characters are just there well and this is a complaint of a lot of uh more modern kaiju films of that they focus too much on the people when you came to see a giant monster so so i feel if someone has like a complaint like well yeah. the, the, back to the meat and potatoes yeah. this is what it is yeah 
And you know, th and and they do do with uh, Charlie Day and uh, Bern Garman with the two scientists. They do a huge exposition dump, mm -hmm. but they do this in this fun bickering way, so you don't feel like you're being explained to. You're seeing an argument, and you're getting to know that these two characters have to work together, and they don't want to. Well, and they come from two different. different you, know, you know, one is very more mathematically oriented. One's more kind of like the, the try and the, fail. Like, yeah. I wanna, I wanna yeah. dive in and do stuff. So and yeah. it definitely pays off later on. But we, but we get the idea of uh, we have to you know somehow stop the the rift from happening mm -hmm. and we also have to, uh, we get the scent of we have to uh, we have this brain of a kaiju to help us figure out what's going on these right. are established here yeah, all the all the crumbs yeah. are being yeah but then we get to meet the rest of yeah. the mm, robot crew yeah um and this is this is fun uh, you you have you know more modern ones. You got the Crimson Typhoon from China yeah. with being you know piloted by triplets. Mm -hmm. uh, you have uh, the Australian one that we saw. Yeah, earlier. the Striker Eureka by the Australians. You have a Russian T nine, which I don't know. There's like they like, say like, uh, they were out there in Siberia for like, like six years, years, and they're they're grizzled, and you, yeah. it looks like old Soviet technology. Well, and I love that each uh, robot looks like it comes from its country. It I does. love that each generation gets better because like the Soviet one is like still like a generation one, mm -hmm. and it looks like it was slapped together in Russia. Like, and it's it it it, it kind of sounds it's like Charlie one, but when they say it, it kind of sounds like Chernobyl, mm -hmm. and it looks like a. Uh, a nuclear smokestack now yeah. that's an American nuclear stack that's not what Chernobyl has but you know what I'll take the shorthand no and the Russians look rough Russia, and tough yeah. the, the Chinese yeah. are you know athletic and, and yeah. you know, the uh, Australians are you know cocky Australians yeah, yeah. and later on we see that their fighting style also mimics their countries of origin of mm -hmm. that you know kung fu style of the Chinese or this boxing like throwing of the Russians no it, like I said it's it makes a world where you're like I really wish mm -hmm. there was more good, yeah. uh, <laughs> you know, yeah. stories in this universe. Um, during uh, shortly after this, we get uh, a uh, establishment that Mako has some grudge against the kaiju beyond, you know, just being part of the world. Right, and uh, she has a weird relationship with the marshal. With the marshal, and then he uh, is uh, left alone, and we get the movie shorthand of. If you suddenly get a random nosebleed, or if you have a random cough, you're not going to make it to the end of the film. No, it is, and it's like I would prefer I, I prefer the the nosebleed yeah. over the cough because people cough. People, well, it's always that kind of thing. You cough into a handkerchief, and there's a, a, a blah, glob blah, of blood. blood yeah. Whereas, like, you know, having you grow up, my my son's like these random nosebleeds. Yeah, they could be. <laughs> they can drip. They can drip. But drip. it is that shorthand of oh, yeah. something's not right here. But you also. Uh, we get kind of the, the remnants of the plan, which is yeah. we're going to go blow up this yeah. rift in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. Yeah, we have one last thing of we're going to send a bomb down, and this time it has to work. Yeah, and it's like we get a lab scene where you get, you know, the, the two scientists saying, you know, uh, you have Herman saying, listen, I'm crunching the numbers. We're going to start getting bigger and more frequent monsters really quick here. And you have Newt, who's like, well, I can figure it out if you just let me do this mind meld yeah. with the kaiju. And it's like, he gets shot down. It's like, no, no, we need facts. We're going to go forward with this yeah. plan. Um, we also, I, I don't know if we skipped over or if it's later, but we also get the literal tip, ticking clock of the, the countdown. That's and and that, that's what that math is of. Every time there's a kaiju event, it's like, yay, we, uh, we won, but... Reset the clock. We've got four days, one day. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's counting up. It, it's counting. Oh, it's counting up for yeah, between every, events. Got between it. events. And I mean, that is, you know, once again, it's slightly different because you would expect a countdown, a countdown clock. Like, oh, we've got this pin. We know that they're coming in two days. Yeah. This is to, you know, he's like, he goes, it's it's morbid, but allows us to see how long we've, how long we've been going. It's very much like how many days has it been since there's been a yeah. workplace accident? Yes. <laughs> it's counting up. So it's always this, this dramatic thing of reset the clock. Yeah. Uh, and then we get the, uh, the the trials the trials to see who's going to be Raleigh's new uh, partner and you know it's a movie we know exactly who it's going to be but we have to go through the the steps but, but it, it, it come back to like you know that they're he's no himbo yeah is I appreciate they're doing real martial arts yeah. stance they're not just rushing in yeah. hitting each other is they're you know he's doing um, aikido aikido and, stances and kendo of like, and, and all these. You know, it's like he's they're they're sizing each other up to yeah. try to figure out which strike is going to work yeah. best. And I think, you know, unlike other movies where it's like, no, no, you would just 
do eat it. the crap of each other and it's like oh you know you're your best like no there is a mental and, element to it and they kind of view it like a chess match of you could have won two moves sooner why didn't you mm-hmm. oh you want to show me and it's like it's not about beating you it's how we work together in a fight and mm-hmm. by fighting each other you can you know it's like you don't truly know someone until you fight them they realize that they are compatible right but the marshal will have none of this none of, none of this can't have none of that no nope. uh we go back to newt who is going to go do his own experiment because he's that kind of yeah. uh He's uh, scientist, yeah. you get a flash of his life. His life is pretty good. Yeah. You know, he looks like he had a good time mm-hmm. in college. Uh, but you're realizing that there are alien forces behind these attacks. Yeah, these aren't mindless creatures just showing up. These are creatures sent on a purpose. Right, and so you got this is where kind of like that Independence Day yeah. thing, which does get revealed deeper later yeah. on in the movie of like, no, no, they're here to, to take, take us over. Yeah. This isn't just random monsters. Yeah. And, but the brain isn't good enough, so he needs to get another one, and he is sent on his own mission to go find the black market with Hannibal Chow. But uh, we cut back to uh, make a, uh, because of the nosebleeds, uh, uh, the Marshal knows, I'm jumping ahead, knows that he, he was planning on probably being the, the other person in, in Gypsy Danger, mm-hmm. but he knows he can't do it. Yeah. He can't, he, he's got one more in him. So he sends Mako in to do a, 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 a dry test. Yes, and she has the worst day ever on yep. the job. Yeah. Is they, they do this compatibility, they're doing things, and she, you know, as they say, chases the rabbit and goes into a very vivid memory, which I'm going to say, you know, if all the acting is criticized for being one yeah. dimensional, this kid is selling the fear. Mm-hmm. And this kid, apparently, uh, I think her name's uh, Mana Ashida. Uh, she plays young Mako. Um, super adorable. And had the hardest time saying young Mother Toro's name, not surprisingly. And so he kind of gave her permission to call him uh, Totoro san. Totoro. <laughs> so for my name of Totoro. Because, like, oh yeah, he's big and cuddly. Yeah. Uh, but um, this whole flashback scene, very similar to uh, when I talked about um, Galaxy Quest, this whole um, thing is on hydraulic. Uh, bumpers. Mm-hmm. So it's not an actual street, uh, street it's a, a, a set. And so whenever the kaiju was walking, everything is literally jumping. That kid is being thrown up and down the puddles, the, mm-hmm. the, well, the it, trash cans. It is that fun practical, practical effect of like, no, we want everything to look like it's reverberating, yeah. like down to the puddles, yeah. rippling. It's like, well, how do you do that? Well, you build, make a big uh, set. Uh, yep. Yeah. Um, yeah, but young Mako is being, you know, chased by a giant crab monster. Yeah. And as we find out, yeah. It was, you know, Marshall yeah. to the rescue, yeah. and she kind of was adopted by him. And so there is this kind of daughter-father mm-hmm. dynamic that kind of comes through, like, okay, some of the conflict, some of the, you know, the love and admiration yeah. makes more sense now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's like, he's holding her back, but it's like, I don't, it's like, I know you want to do this, but I also don't want to lose you. Mm-hmm. And I mean, I think yeah. he, there is, you know, in his anger, yeah. um, which we'll talk, uh, uh, I'll talk about that because I think it does tie into mm. this before we go to yeah, Hannibal. that's right. Is he basically scrubs her yeah. after this and uh, Raleigh is really angry at it. And I think Idris Elba yeah. has done an ex, very much like um, mm-hmm. Denzel Washington, does a really good job of showing anger. Yeah. It's not like he flares up, he boils and then explodes. You know, and I, I appreciate this. As a father, yeah. sometimes your patience is tested, yeah. and you start out calm, and then yeah. all of a sudden you like yell, like yeah. I don't have to answer to you, you, and don't you ever touch me, again. ever ever touch me again. And then you know the point to the ear is like I just need you to say just, those words. Just say it, like and he is, he is humbling a soldier because yeah. he is in no mood to deal with it. But it is that thing of that Raleigh was right, like yeah. you aren't doing her any favors. Yeah. You are acting more as a father than a commander. <laughs> you know what the numbers say. Yeah. Uh, so we go to you know back to um, Charlie Day's storyline of him having to meet uh, get another brain from the black market in the bone slums. The bone another slums. Great, great name. You know, great names. You know, and Hannibal Chow and who you know with that name, what do you expect? Well, you do you don't expect it, but you love Ron Perlman, another Guillermo del Toro regular. Well, and. I have to love Ron Perlman of mm. who is an actor who is going to overshadow giant kaiju <laughs> yeah. and robots. It's like he is playing it big, but yeah. it's like it works because it's Ron Perlman yeah. and it's such 
a great character. Um, I'll just mention now because uh, they they focus on his shoes first. Mm -hmm. uh, these amazing metal uh, giant, shoes. giant shoes. He stole those, uh, took them home, <laughs> and it's like that. Of course, he did. Well, his come up and says his wife stole them and mel melted them down for some nice heels. So Ooh. I was like. Oh. Uh, of course that happened, or he gave it to her. Either way, she melted them down. Oh, I'm a little sad by that. Yeah, those are some awesome shoes. But, but yeah, no, we have a lot of interaction um, mm. between Hannibal yeah. Chow and Newt, and basically, you know, we'll skip ahead, just yeah. for continuity, yeah. is that him saying, like, I need a brain because I want to do this, and Hannibal Chow's like, are you out of your yeah. mind? What have you done? Yeah, saying, like, that mind meld it's like goes both, both ways. ways. They're now probably going to be coming for you. And at that moment, the double event that the other scientist uh, uh, predicted has now happened. Mm -hmm. and, and they're we, one Jaeger down. Well, and it's like they're, they're, they have the two mm -hmm. uh, characters, which I called as a glow lizard and a gorilla punch yeah, one, yes. whose name is Otachi for the glow lizard and yeah. Leatherback for the... Yeah. Um, and we get an excellent fight scene mm -hmm. of bringing out all the Jaegers into the yeah. bay. Uh, but these ye uh, these uh, kaiju have new tricks. They yeah. basically immobilize them with an EMP blast. Yeah. And you're going to have to get Gypsy Danger out there because she's analog. Yeah, because we, we, you know, we lose two of the Jaegers pretty early on in the mm -hmm. fight. And I, I don't know if anyone else has fought a friend or a brother in a swimming pool. But don't throw someone in water. It doesn't hurt them. They just get away from you. I, I was like, this is a swimming creature. Throwing them isn't going to hurt them. But yeah, yeah I mean, it, it is fun. But yeah. Gypsy Danger comes, uh, does a massive fight yeah. with uh, the gorilla yeah. monster. I appreciate that they do a double tap. Like, wait, is, is it, it dead? dead? Yeah. Let's make sure. Yeah. Um, and then... They fight the uh, the other one that the glow lizard. the glow lizard and it's like how do we lose a giant monster in a city but we do mm -hmm. but I also like this is the scene that I say epitomizes this movie mm -hmm. uh, if you want to sum it up it's a giant robot dragging a container ship like a sword to hit a giant monster oh yeah I mean there's buildings breaking yeah. they are throwing themselves yeah. around it can fly it takes some yeah. base cups it, it got some altitude rather quickly there didn't it did it? and but it's like we're, we're out of choices no we have magic sword why didn't we use that from the beginning because it's like an anime you have to wait till the end of the episode <laughs> to pull out your magic yeah, sword yeah, you don't want to ruin it um uh, during you know during this fight, uh, Charlie Day has to go to um, uh, uh, a shelter mm -hmm. because and I'm curious, is it actually hunting him? Do you think? Because it does find him. It does find him, or it, is it just coincidence? It's hard to say. Yeah. I mean, it, the 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 story would suggest that it is looking, looking for him. him. I don't know what yeah. the end result. If that's just like, yeah. hey, we're drawn to you like a moth to a flame. There's no real benefit. Yeah. But you know these creatures. Yeah can't be programmed to do more than and seek and, and destroy. destroy so. And if these aliens sent them over, it's like, well, that's a good enough reason as any. That's fair. Gypsy Danger succeeds. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, Charlie Day goes back to uh, Ron Perlman and says, I, I need you, a, you, you owe me a brain. brain. And Ron Perlman, I guess because he used him as bear, is like, yeah, why not? Why not? Uh, yeah. But yeah, and no. they get the second brain, which they say is like, like the dinosaur has a second brain. That's been proven false, but, you know, shorthand. Uh, you, you know, people are like, yeah, dinosaurs had two brains, one's in their butt. Yeah, why not? Uh, but they find out there's a baby kaiju. It looks terrifying. Why would it? Now, I was like, I, I had two thoughts of why would these genetically cloned um, kaiju be sent pregnant? And then I went, well, because then that's just like another kaiju to fight. It's like. It's like a, a, it's a troop transport. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a forward base. It's a forward base, yeah. But it, but the baby eats Ron Perlman. No! I know. Oh, that guy. Yeah. But they get the brain from the baby kaiju. Mm-hmm. And, um... So then Herman and Newt can, you know, kind of team up together to you know, kind of get through this, um... Yeah. The hurdle of yeah, and say you get to see more of uh, Newt's past. He still had fun in college. Yeah. Uh, Herman did not have a good yeah. time growing up. You kind of feel a little bad for yeah. him, but you realize that this plan to drop a nuke into the rift is not going to work. But they have to rush back to tell yeah, everyone. everyone because the the plan is already in motion. And we get our um, our our the issue of that well, the, the Australian father. 
uh, broke his arm, so he needs a new uh, co-pilot, and mm -hmm. that's Idris Elba. Yep, and he gives the cancel the apocalypse speech. Yeah, it's the, again, it's like it is the speech to end all speeches. It's you know we are we're fine for our Independence Day. Mm -hmm. it's, we are canceling the apocalypse. It's not a terrible one. It's not a great one, but it definitely uh, you know does does the trick. Um, I kind of glossed over the uh, Australians, but the younger one, Yancey Beckett, I think Yancey. he he's kind of like the the person antagonist to the, to the story of yeah. always giving them crap, and I went. Why is he being so mean? But then you gotta realize he's been drifting with his father. He's probably experienced his own conception, and that would probably give you a, a, a bad feeling in the tum tum. So, Ooh. yeah, I, that, I that was the that. thought I had on Rudy Walsh. Like he, he experienced stuff he didn't need to experience. Oh, I'm gonna have nightmares now. <laughs> yeah, but he he now is like questioning Idris Elba's like. How are, how do you know if you're, we're going to be compatible? And again, Idris Elba being amazed, like, I bring no anger, I bring no memories, and I've got you figured out, daddy's boy. And went, yeah, okay, cool. Right, we can go. We can go. Uh, but yeah, baby, this all kind of comes to uh, a final fight underwater, yeah. which yeah. is fun and different. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's, it's like, I've never seen a battle at the bottom of the ocean unless it's a submarine battle. So exactly. this is cool. It's fun. Uh, you get three, you get three kaijus yeah. this time. You get, like... An alligator hammerhead yeah. pull, and a, a you get the you get the big boy coming out. Yeah. you know you get the the category uh, five. Five. Yeah. It's like you know so the, first it's, it's, our, it's been leading up to this. It's yeah. this big fight. Uh, Idris Elba kind of sacrifices himself mm -hmm. to kind of clear the way. They get the information that they need to drag a kaiju. Yeah, mm -hmm. and the the I really love the visual of them blowing up their bomb. And it creates an air bubble. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's like that's—I I don't know if that actually would happen, but it's cool. It's cool. It's like it's—it's it's dry for a moment, and yeah. all the water comes, comes rushing, rushing back. back. Um, I also appreciate that the kaiju's in anime fashion are polite enough to let them have their dramatic moments of arming the bomb while charging them. They're still far enough away. So they could still set it off and still have that moment of, you know, my father said this, you mm -hmm. know, you're, you know, it's like, yep, that's, that's pure, yeah, that's it's class act, that's class act kaiju. It's, it's that cinematic, like, you know, a countdown that says five yeah. seconds, but really takes like 15. Yeah. Uh, but we, you know, we ride the, the body down, you know, gypsy yeah. dangers in a bad place. Yes. You know, look at, you know, uh, we get this kind of, no, I'm going to, I'm going to be the self sacrificing yeah. hero. Yeah. I'm doing this alone. Yeah, Mako's air is also going out, so I'm going to share my air. Mm -hmm. Um, and I am very happy that, as they said, that like the, the Rift needs the barcode of a kaiju DNA to allow him through. I'm glad that's just only one way because the escape pods make it back out through it. So that's nice. It is. It is. Um, I mean, it's like plot holes aside. I mean, you do get this fun. Well, I'm also glad that the alien planet is also completely fluid because the escape pod floats through there. Unless it's a gravity thing. I don't know. Eh, you know, at this, <laughs> we, we are five minutes we, from end. It's like, if you're going to start questioning things, I don't know why you're here. Why are you even at this part of the movie? Yeah. But no, we get in, you know, we get uh, a, a half Jesus on the cross. Yeah, yeah you the know, Jesus robot. Jesus robot blows up the aliens. Pod goes out, you know. The rift is closed. The rift is closed. Get to the choppas and find those escape pods. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, we get a, is he alive? Is he not? He clearly looks alive. Well, I mean, he's, he's clearly alive, but I'm more impressed that Mako can swim in that suit. I mean, I feel like that's, you know, full plate armor. That should be dragging her down. <laughs> she is a strong woman. They are. And, yeah. But... One more thing that this movie twists is that even though they've been hinting lightly yes. at a romance, yeah. there is no kiss at the end. I so appreciate that, as like, too. As like, no, no, that's not the point of the story. It's like, you can guess, like, maybe they're romantic, or maybe it's just because they've shared yeah. so much. But it never goes over that line of yeah. just, it could be, it could not be. Yeah. We're not going to do the kiss at the end. Yeah. I appreciate a yeah. movie that's like, no. It's not the point. That's not the point. It's not, you know, the you know, the shorthand is like, Lynette's love interest not as central to the story. She's not that. She's her his partner. And it's like, yes, we get that, oh, we're compatible. But the flirtation is trying to find the compatibility. And, mm -hmm. and him saying, like, you know, there's things I see clearly now. And, you know... Now that I you know have come back to my life, mm -hmm. and then this last one, but I am so appreciative that that's not the point. That's not the point. And so you do get this kind of like they just bump heads. Yeah, helicopters find them, and we get an awesome end credit music. Yeah, music. Uh, I mean, the theme song, the theme you know, tune soundtrack of the the robots is amazing. Yes. And then we get a mid credit sequence of Ron Perlman's not dead, and he wants to know where his shoe is. His wife took it. His wife took it and melted it down. But you know. Uh, Great music, great action. Um, don't wait through the credits to hear the end song of the credits. No, I don't like that one. That is, they they do a pop song yeah. that is, it, it does not work. It 
It, of all the music, it's yeah, it's but, well. but and uh, don't watch the sequel. Yeah, don't watch the sequel. I haven't tried the anime. It's one of those things like I really wish Guillermo del Toro was given more license to do things with this, but I think I can be happy that I have the one. Well, and it's that problem of this one kind of finishes. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's it a, needs it's a, anymore, no, and that's why it's the problem story. of. No, they they did what they set out to do. So mm -hmm. why why I, I know it's an amazing world and you want to live more in it, but the job's done. Mm -hmm. No, and mm -hmm. uh, things that I appreciate also about this movie is they actually made uh, a couple hundred kaiju and mm -hmm. Jaegers for this and yeah. put it up to a vote with the general audience saying, "Hey, which ones? Which do you ones like? do you like?" And I kind of appreciate that there is this kind of giant book yeah. of. Jaegers and kaiju out there that you know you could open up and kind of have your own little dream yeah. world of like well what would it have looked and, like or what I, did this look and like? I forgot to mention when we were talking about the kaijus that Guillermo del Toro wanted it to be it's like yes this is going to be all CGI but I kind of want it to be designed in such a way that two guys in a rubber suit could still do this mm -hmm. well and I think uh -huh. you had said this before it's like it's the genius of having this set at like night yeah. times or storms like you can it covers the yeah. It's like this. This is um, you know this is not an older movie, but the CG does hold up. But yeah, because because they, they did tricks to make it not look like well, that's clearly yeah, yeah. not real. And it's not like the action was hard to see, but it was like it was filmed in perspective to give it scale and stuff, and filmed at rain and filmed at night, so that the things that might not look realistic, your eye kind of fills in. Mm -hmm. And where the sequel is in bright Broad daylight day. and other CGI that doesn't do it, it it. it this holds up still. Yeah. So, you know, go into it thinking, you know, you know, it is an action. It may not be for everyone. I think it's yeah. a lot of fun. Yeah. I think, you know, you deserve to watch at least something that you don't have to think too hard about. Yeah. You just, you just enjoy it. You just, you have those, I, I wouldn't call this a guilty pleasure, but if you can find solace in enjoying this movie, go for it because you don't know what's out there. You don't know what's happening. It's that uncertainty. It's like a quantum of solace is our next movie. But no one sees this, but my my face is in my hands, and I am shaking <laughs> that it That one was forth. a stretch. I was happy about the solace part, but the quantum one, that, that was a little, you know, unpredictable. Well, uh, <laughs> so yes, a James Bond. Now, people might be saying, wait, wait, quantum of solace is a cue, but, but what about the James, James Bond? like, well, there are certain movies that we do know that, like... There's like, a lot of them. I mean, so... When we first thought about doing these podcasts, we were going to do it in pure alphabetical order, and we did not want like a whole year's worth of just Star yeah, Trek, Star, Star Wars, War. Starman. So we said, hey, if there's a uh, series of movies that has a, uh, you know, like the colon add on tagline, we're going to use the tagline as our alphabetical. So. so join us next week for Quantum of Solace, our first James Bond movie. Hopefully, you watch Pacific Rim, and if you're not, please do because it's phenomenal. And we'll uh, catch you next week. Bye. 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 That's going to be the thing, isn't it? Did you start a new one? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I, it's new and recording and saved. New, fresh, and out of the package. Smell. We have to pretend we're doing this in two, every week. Otherwise, the people, the, are gonna, the, the, they're gonna, the myth of us working is, is shattered. They're going to they're gonna turn on us. Mm.